What happens to the staging area during a commit? So lots of beginners to Git seem to be confused about what the staging area is, how it's represented, how it changes, what exactly a Git commit is, how it is related to the staging area. And I hope this video will clear some things up. Okay, let's see, what have I prepared? I have prepared a simple demo project with two text files. Uh, let's see what's stored inside those text files. So hello text simply contains the word hello and primes text contains uh, the first four prime numbers because we love them so much. <laughs> okay, mm, before we go on, let's see this. There's, there's a cool command called find. Find will show you um, the state of your current directory plus all the subdirectories and so on. And I can say I want to execute this command every second or every two seconds or every five seconds, but I think every second is good for this video. The find command, and you can see here mm, the timestamp goes up every second. And now when I initialize a Git repository, we can see uh, what changed on our hard drive. So you can see Git added a hidden dot git directory. So hidden means you can't normally see it because it's none of your business normally. And inside of this dot git um, directory, there are interesting files and, um, and subdirectories. So for example, the head file is um, simple and interesting. We can peek into that. You can see inside the head file, we have a reference to uh, the current branch. So that would be the master branch. And um, that's usually just a file called master stored inside the refs heads directory. You can see um, the refs heads directory already exists, but there are no files inside it yet because we haven't committed anything yet. Okay, but conceptually we are already on the master branch. Okay, um, right, so maybe let's add our files uh, to the staging area. So hello text and oh, something interesting happened and primes text. So you can see every time you add a new file to the staging area, inside the, the objects directory, um, a subdirectory is created and then inside that subdirectory, a file is created and the system is really simple. So if you combine the subdirectory name with the file name, you get 40 characters and those 40 characters are simply a hash code, right? A SHA-1 hash code, if you want to be exact. So um, Let's, let's simply look inside those files. So let's see, git objects ce01. So that's <laughs> the contents of the first file. Um, not really human readable, mm, but we can make git uh, tell us a more human readable form with, with this command, uh, ce01. Uh, that would be hello. So the string hello is simply, I think, zipped or something and then stored inside that file. Mm, and um, since I'm using this command so often, I have created an alias for it, simply git cat. So that normally doesn't exist. You can create an alias for, for yourself if you want. Um, and the other hash is bdd1. So there's our contents of the primes text file. Um, but what is important is um, the name hello text and prime text um, is not stored inside those files that you can see here. And the files are all also named different, right? So the file names hello text and prime text seem to have been lost somehow. So where are they stored? Um, maybe you didn't notice, but above the head file, there's an index file. Let's look into that maybe. So that would be git index. There we are. And with a little bit of peeking and searching, yes, there we can see hello.txt and primes.txt. And um, before those names, we should be able to identify the hash codes. Let's see, the hash code ends in 4a for hello. Du, 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 du. Here's 4a. And then we have 16 bytes, 17, 18, 19, 20. Here we are. CE013625, CE013625. That's for the hello text. And primes text ends in 8.9. That would be this one, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, right? So the SHA-1 hashes are 40 characters or 20 bytes, right? Okay, so inside that index file, we have an association between hash code and file name. 
Okay, I think before we do our first commit, I want to close this one and go inside the objects file, bec uh, objects directory, because um, the other stuff is not that interesting and it tends to fill up the screen otherwise. Okay. Mm, right, of, co of course, this form isn't very readable. So this is a binary representation of the index or the staging area. Index is just um, an alias for staging area. And a uh, more human readable form would be uh, list files minus staging area. Here you can see it. Or I have made an alias git index. Okay, so um, the index file is um, it, right. It's just the contents of your staging area, right? So um, this is um, some file permissions. The hash. Uh, I don't know what the zero really means. Maybe you can tell me in the comments and the name of the file. Okay, um, we still haven't committed yet. So let's maybe do that. Let's make our first commit. There we go. And um, you can see that that something um, happened here. So what does Git tell us? Uh, we're on the master branch. This is our very first commit. The very first commit is, is special as we, as we will see. And it has the hash 97 something. 97 something is this one, right? You can see even commits themselves are stored inside that git objects database. So maybe let's look in uh, in that file 9753. There we are. So that's just a text file that was uh, hashed and zipped and then stored in that subdirectory inside that file. And we can see uh, author and committer, the name, <laughs> the fictitious email address. I don't know if that's, this one is real. I just invented it. Um, the timestamp and the time zone. That would be Berlin, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and the um, commit message. But more importantly, the hash of a so-called tree. So trees are just um, directories stored in Git's database, right? So we can peek into that file as well, 6D2F. There we go. And you can see that the um, the tree of a commit looks remarkably like the staging area, right? Here's the staging area. Here's the commit tree. Uh, the only thing that's different is the word blob. So blob is just git speak for normal file uh, with some permissions, the hash and, and the file name. And this the zero doesn't appear here, but I don't know what the zero represents really. Okay. So um, first observation, what happens during a commit? So during a commit, the state, the staging area is simply copied into a commit object, if you will, or the commit tree is a snapshot of the current state of the index or the staging area. Okay, so we have created this snapshot. And um, now what's the state of the index? And um, since any status or diffing tool will tell you everything is clean, nothing new, nothing to do, many beginners think, okay, now the index must be empty, but it's not. So um, committing doesn't change the staging area at all. It still has the same state as before the commit. Okay, um, now let's make it a little more interesting. Maybe let's add um, another file. Let's say hello stored in high text. Okay, first of all, nothing changed in the right window. Um, why is that the case? Let's add it to the staging area. Let's look at it. You can see now high text is part of the staging area because I added it. Um, but it has the same hash as the hello text file and there, there would be no need to create this file again. And or even if we did it, it would simply overwrite the first file. Maybe it overwrites it, I'm not really sure shouldn't really matter as long as you have no hash collisions. Um, okay, but that's going on a, on a, on another tangent. Okay, um, so you can see the index doesn't simply contain the new file that I added um, after the last commit, but all all the files that I have ever added to the to the um, staging area, right? Okay, and if I do a new commit, it's called the second commit. Then again, some uh, new files appear. Um, here we have our commit ID. Let's peek into that. 
Um, so what's the difference between this commit and the first commit that we saw? The first commit had tree author and committer, and the second commit has tree parent author and committer. And this parent ID um, is the ID of the first commit, right? So the, the commits are simply linked via um, hash ID. A new commit refers to the old commit via its hash ID. Okay, and the tree is this one. Let's look into it. There we are. And again, you can see it's a complete snapshot of the index, right? So it looks exactly like this one, same hashes, same file names, just with the word blob attached onto it. So not just the new file, all the files. Okay, um, another exercise, let's modify a file. Okay, let's say the primes text, let's say some text above it, let's say I love primes and maybe um, add some more. Oops, one is not a prime. <laughs> okay, mm, then let's see. The git diff command um, tells you what's now different uh, between between those those versions. Let's say we want to add that version to, to the index. There we are. And you can now see that primes text has a different hash, right? This is the hash of the old version. Let's look at the old version. Here's the old version. And this is the hash of the new version. Oops. There we are, this is the new version. And this, the new version is the complete new version. It's not a diff or a delta or uh, telling you what to apply so you get the new version. This is the new version, the complete new version. Okay. Uh, we didn't commit it yet, so let's do a third commit. And now again, if you look at that commit, you can see the parent is the commit that we uh, looked on last time, the second commit, and the tree will again look very similar to the index, right? Here's the um, new hash of the, of the primes text file with the added content. Okay, so that's maybe the, the hardest thing to grasp. The index file is not cleaned out or emptied during a commit. It doesn't change at all. And a commit is not a delta or a diff. A commit is a complete snapshot of the index and the index is a complete snapshot of whatever you put into it. Okay, only those diffing tools will manually scan new versions, old versions and tell you in a human readable form what changed. And different diffing tools will show different results based on how um, they are configured, how um, intelligent in air quotes they are and so on, right? Some will only show you line difference, some will, will show you column difference and so on. Okay, so a common complaint uh, once you get to this level of understanding is, wait a minute, every time I add a line to a file, a completely new file is stored in Git's database that seems very wasteful, right? So, um, and, and it, indeed, indeed it is. Um, so every time you push to, remote, to a remote repository or pull from a remote repository, Git will do some internal compression. And we can, um, we can uh, simulate that, we can say, or we can say, do, please do it now. <laughs> we can say Git repack, that will, um, try to find similarities between text files and then um, make make a um, smaller, more efficient representation that in, that employs diffing. Okay, you can see now we have a pack file and an index file, and then if we, if we do a garbage collection, these heavyweight uh, object files will disappear, and you you will save space on your hard drive. But that doesn't that doesn't change um, the usage of um, uh, of Git, right? So you still have those hashes, you don't see them as files on your hard drive anymore, but you still identify all content in Git with those hashes. That doesn't change. Okay, so I hope that gave you some explanation what's going on. I hope it cleared some things up. And um, there's a lot more I could dive deeper into in Git internals, what exactly is stored in those pack files and so on. But maybe that's the topic for another video.